Ladies and gentlemen, a uh, wonderful good morning. My name is Jan Nöter. I'm looking uh, after the affairs of the uh, German Arab Chamber of Industry and Commerce, or in Germany known as the AHK Egypt. Allow me to welcome you to today's uh, webinar on Nafesa and uh, Cargo X. Um, this is a, a very, very important topic, and we as the ARK, we ran already uh, uh, four or five uh, webinars with uh, uh, 300 plus guests, which shows to us yeah, that yeah, the um, uh, new digitization process of uh, customs procedures uh, in Egypt uh, it takes great interest uh, when it comes to uh, the procedures uh, in uh, Germany abroad, as well as in Egypt itself, when it comes to the importer. It is my, it is my great pleasure today that yeah, uh, we'll have very, very honorable uh, speakers, and uh, those would introduce the topic out of the view of Nafisa. This is this uh, common window. Uh, which is being used by the importer and Cargo X, which is the uh, window, the communication tool, yeah, uh, which is used by the exporter. Um, uh, the, the plan is yeah, to have a, a 15 minutes introduction each of yeah, Nafesa and Cargo X. Thereafter, I'm going to ask yeah, uh, questions to both the representative of these two organizations. Um, uh, which we received from you, dear guests, from importers as well as from exporters. And uh, thereafter, we are going to opening up the floor to you to ask your questions. Um, allow me to give you one more piece of information before we jump right into it. Um, the AHK Egypt yeah, it has, of course, a website as all the AHKs. And yeah, we already have a very prominent um, and yeah, filled a Q and A uh, topic in there. So if you have questions thereafter, uh, after this webinar, kindly do not hesitate to either have a look at our website, whether your answer is or uh, whether your question is already answered, or alternatively. Yeah, to uh, drop a line to us, uh, we will find uh, then uh, the the answer, and uh, we will correspond with you directly. Having said that, yeah, let's jump right into it. It's my great pleasure to uh, uh, welcome uh, Mr. Vieran Ortinski, who is the uh, CEO of Cargo X, and uh, he is going to um, uh, explain to us, yeah, and introduce to us Cargo X. Yeah, which is the main main tool of correspondence when it comes up uh, when it comes to the exporter in order to uh, get a link to the Nafisa system. Mr. Ortinski, do I have you? Good morning, and thank you very much for joining yes. us. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Jan, for this uh, kind introduction. Welcome everybody. So I'm here to to introduce uh, uh, Carwax. So if you allow me, I will start. Uh, sharing my screen. Uh, first, uh, I will I will explain something about the uh, Carvex company. So uh, we are uh, we are European company based in Slovenia, Ljubljana, established in 2018. And our first idea was to use blockchain to transfer bill of lading between between the parties, not only to transfer document but also uh, title ownership over the cargo through the blockchain. So we created first smart bill of lading in history, and that was back in 2018. Uh, of course, uh, along the way, there was so many, uh, I would say, inputs from the market, and that's how our platform was, was built in cooperation with, with the users, with the market. Uh, we were kind of uh, evolving into blockchain document transfer. So now we are providing our users uh, with the uh, with, uh, possibility to transfer more than 50 different uh, dif different uh, digital original documents on our platform so what we do is a uh, is a we are transferring original digital documents with blockchain on our platform <clears throat> i will not spend much time on explaining why why we are doing this uh, so uh, in 21st century uh, with with the paper documents uh, 
to handle paper documents in, in daily in daily business so i think it's really outdated so there are some other ways how you can do it uh, um, it is more convenient also for pandemic times when you cannot attend your office regularly so uh, you can easily accept uh, digital originals in also in your home office so you cannot escape from from your work anymore <clears throat> so yeah uh, to explain cargo x platform um, uh, the best way the best way is to use something what you know from everyday use so functionalities of email it looks a little bit like your account on on your uh, outlook or or uh, or gmail uh, so to enter the platform, we have some functionalities which you are using, which you are using uh, when you're accessing your uh, internet banking, uh, and everything is done uh, with the help of uh, public blockchain technology. So this is the easiest way how to explain uh, our platform is is, is actually working. Uh, our us customers are actually benefiting uh, with uh, absolute security by using public blockchain. Uh, we are actually providing you with uh, absolute security in a way that uh, this network uh, cannot be hacked. So, someone, if if someone would like to intercept a transaction and change something related to that transaction, uh, he would need to take all internet down at once. So, transactions are are, are performed for just a fraction of the cost of uh, sending uh, paper documents uh, globally, and also speed of transaction is uh, less than ten seconds uh, nowadays. You will also see in in a, in a following movie that the user interface is uh, really friendly. So that was built together with our with our uh, customers, with our supporters, and uh, it will remind you on something what you're using every day, and that's again your email account. You can access the platform through your uh, web browser, uh, and uh, also there is option to access the platform through API, so you can integrate into your ERP system. So we have also open API, and also we are enabling our users with contact contactless uh, way of doing business today. Um, features will be explained also and answered uh, also in your questions you have raised, uh, but uh, uh, we are focused here on, on ACI and uh, I don't think I will, I will spend much time on this one and also something will be explained in the movie. Uh, so maybe a few words about, uh, about uh, public blockchain, so why we are using public blockchain because of uh, its neutrality, it is open source and there is no central ruling authority around it so nobody owns that that uh, that network it is decentralized and you have a, a, a ability to to perform transactions in 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 full privacy so whatever you upload on the platform and you send through the blockchain is visible only to sender and receiver because every document is encrypted and then a uh, hash of the document is is actually sent over the blockchain to the recipient and access links to that encrypted document on IPFS are shared between sender and receiver. So not even we, Carwax, we cannot see what you are doing and what documents are you sending over the blockchain. So if you send something to Nafesa, it is visible to you and to Nafesa, not to us, not to anybody else. <clears throat> Uh, also, uh, what is important here to say that uh, blockchain transaction happens from one hand to another in a digital way. So uh, this is equal like you're giving from, from your hand to hand of the receiver something. So that is uh, that is similar, but done with the blockchain technology. Vieran, you're not, yes? Vieran, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Um, uh, we got various uh, messages. Yeah, Is it possible that you speak up a little bit since some of our participants hardly hear you? Okay, I mean, uh, yes, okay, okay. So... Uh, I will speak a little bit louder. I hope it's not too loud to everybody. Uh, so yes, uh, that's that's um, on on this slide. Yes, we we are also we are also uh, approved by international group of PNI clubs and uh, as electronic BL provider. Uh, that was uh, we were approved back in February uh, 11, 2020, and Cargoex works also as a observer and a digital transport and logistics forum uh, with EU commission. We are working on, on this legislation, which will happen in 2025 when we are turning transport documents in transport and logistics uh, within the Europe into structured data. 
uh, Carvex is also working with INADBA, World Economic Forum, and some other uh, initiatives around standardization and digitalization of uh, BL and other, other documents. So just uh, one happy customer of Cargoex uh, to be mentioned here is G2Ocean, Norwegian carrier who is uh, using Cargoex for almost uh, two and a half years now. And uh, exclusively on some trail lanes, uh, they are not using uh, paper documents anymore. So they're supporting us really from, from day one. And final thought for the future. So document is just, uh, just a data written in a way that humans can read it. So uh, if we change uh, documents, we structure data, basically you don't need human attention to read the content and to check the document. And uh, then we are moving to, to blockchain data transfer. And we are here to support you with that uh, possibility already today, because we can, we can uh, transfer over the blockchain any kind of document structured or non-structured. <clears throat> and now I will go to movie, if you allow me. I will demonstrate how to do an Egyptian ACI filling on the Cargo X platform. First, Let's log in using username and password. When logging in from a new device a two-factor authentication is required. I will paste in a code I received in the email. After you are logged into the platform, Click here in the corner, and you can see that your blockchain key is currently locked. Before we can transfer documents out of our account, we need to digitally sign them with our blockchain key, which needs to be unlocked. So we will unlock our key first. Click the Unlock Your Blockchain Key button. Click Choose File, and point to the blockchain key file you have downloaded at the time when you created your blockchain key. Also, provide the encryption password that protects your blockchain key. Finally, click the green button labeled Unlock Blockchain Key. Your blockchain key is now unlocked. Quite simple, right? Let's click the Compose button to create a new smart envelope. For our ACI filing purpose we will select the Egypt ACI envelope. The recipient is pre-filled. All you need to enter is your ACID number and then attach the required documents listed below. You can either upload the documents from your computer or select them from your CargoX inbox if you received them over the platform. Let's upload them from the computer. You can upload multiple files at once. Now I need to select a document type for each uploaded file, so I click Properties. I start typing the document type to quickly find it. Some document types require additional information, which I enter below. Let's repeat this for the remaining three documents. Besides the certificate, I need a copy or a draft of the bill of lading. I also need an invoice, preferably one where mine and importer's tax or VAT number is listed. And finally, I need a packaging list. Cargo X platform supports over 50 document types, so let's scroll down to find the right one. Our ACI envelope is now ready to be filled. Below I can write an optional message to the recipient. Once I am ready to proceed, I click the seal button. 
This creates a digital fingerprint of all documents and encrypts them. Now a new action becomes available. Once I am ready to submit the ACI, I click the transfer button. In the overview screen I can see what is about to happen. On the Cargo X platform document transfers are executed only once user digitally signs them with his personal blockchain key. No one else can do that on behalf of user, not even Cargo X. Documents are now securely transferred to the recipient with the help of the blockchain technology. They are delivered within a few seconds, worldwide. To verify that documents were really delivered let's click on the sent folder, and click the envelope we have just sent. We can see the status as delivered. Speed, safety, and cost savings, are just some of the benefits that CargoX brings. Thank you for your attention. So, it's that simple. And back to you, Jan. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for yeah, uh, this uh, introduction of the topic uh, um, and uh, for the video. Dear, dear guests, allow me to share with you um, that, of course, we record this session. And yes, this session is going to be uh, copied to our website as well as yeah, uh, to YouTube. Yes, this introduction video, which you just saw, is going to be uploaded to our website as well. For those of you yeah, who did not see it very clearly. And yes, there are going to be uh, questions and answers. Your questions will be noted. And if there's time left, will be answered. I will ask certainly like uh, 50 different questions, which we already received during earlier webinars as well as yeah uh, which are yeah not already answered yeah on and displayed on our website our website is very simple to find it's a h k egypt yeah and then on the on the, on the main side yeah you scroll down a little bit and you see nafisa yeah and uh, you'll have all the the information needed yeah, and of course, uh, Miran uh, will uh, be with us and will answer a lot of questions you may have or which we already received yeah, right after yeah, uh, the next yeah, uh, introduction, which is Nafisa. And it's my great pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Uh, Gamel Kot. Engineer uh, Gamel Kot is the uh, CEO of Nafisa. So basically, yeah, he yeah, and his team are working, were working, are working very, very hard on the introduction of that topic. And uh, it's my great pleasure now yeah, to pass the floor to you, Engineer Kot, yeah, for your introduction. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Sean. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you here in these moments. I'll try to uh, take you through a quick, uh, quick trip to introduce what Nafisa is all about and what's the ACI as a component Nafisa is going to do, of course, with the help and the support of uh, the blockchain technology provided by CardWaves. Uh, our project in simple, it's a national project in Egypt and it's to establish a national single window for, for, for trade across borders. In this regard, the main concept is to number one, uh, differentiate between the service provider and the beneficiary of the service uh, the client himself and to do things electronically. Uh, in this regard, in this model, data and documents are only provided once through, the, through that logical window to be processed by the designated parties in, in accordance to the workflows and the laws of the country. And in all cases, the inputs and the outputs of the system are provided to the client or the beneficiary through that same window. Okay. Now, in order for us to do so, I'd like to introduce to you what's the scope of the, our project. It is so huge because foreign trade, actually, it might be importation or exportation, might look simple in, uh, in title, but uh, underneath there is plenty of authorities and agencies that are involved. In our case, 
we are now our the, the 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 governmental cloud that is hosting that's hosting all the software and systems that do provide the services needed for importers and exporters in Egypt uh, is the system number one is hosting three main players three main players they are joined here the customs authority the general organization for export and import control the national food safety authority these are three main players for the most part of every shipment that's coming into the country or going out of the country abroad now that being said that does not mean there is no intervention by other other uh, uh, let's say supplementary or auxiliary or subordinate uh, agencies we call them ogas the other uh, governmental agencies these are marked by uh, the round uh, round circles here in different colors whereas uh, color green means that this is these entities mr cot i'm sorry you faded away we cannot hear you anymore okay you don't hear me um very very low voice i am afraid to say yeah you were very clear and then it faded away okay i'm surprised i'll do it I'll, okay i'll take it back do you hear me now better Nah, i'm afraid it's not better You do not hear me anymore? No, perfect, great, continue, sorry for interruption. Okay, no, thanks that you brought it to the light. As I said, the, uh, the national platform hosts the three main agencies, Customs, GOIC, General Organization for Export and Import Control, and the National Food Safety and Safety Authority. These are the three main players. However, there are other satellite players that intervene in the process of cargo clearance for importation or exportation and these these ogas are represented by the multicolored circles the green color designates that an agency is connected to the platform at the moment the uh, the red ones are the ones we are working on at the moment and finally the ye the yellow ones are agencies that uh, that in a sense do not contribute that much in the process, all right? Now, this is this represents the scope of automation in the Nafesa platform. Now, you as a trader, if you, if you remember the last slide, you are not supposed as a trader, importer or export, exporter to know all the details in the background. This to you look, would look like a, a black box. And that's now here is transparent. I'm just encompassing all those entities into one drawing. For, for you as a trader, as an importer, as an Egyptian importer, you would have, or a broker, you would have four steps to undertake in order to get your goods out. Number one, you have to submit your data and documents. Number two, you have to witness the inspection if there is any. Third, you have to go, to have to pay the duties and fees to the government. And fourth, you need to collect the clearance form that will take you out of the port where the goods arrive. So for you, they are, these are the steps that you need to worry about. But I wanted to say that underneath that layer, there is, there is a huge thing that is taking place. Now this quick drawing, it might look complex, but this wants to convey one message that this, plan, this system is working above an infrastructure that is central that covers entire entire Egypt, all the seaports, airports, dry ports, uh, border posts and stuff like that. And that data center in the middle, that private or government cloud hosts an enterprise database that hosts all the data about your shipment from the moment it arrives until the moment it leaves the, the, the gate at the port. So at the end of the day, every single shipment that is processed, whether that being an import shipment or an export shipment, all the events that took place by all the parties concerned are being stored along this film or this DNA strip about your shipment so that this data can be analyzed by the different parties uh, in accordance to their actually the responsibilities to provide meaningful information and decisions to be taken. This platform integrates with third parties uh, like the banks we are not a bank, we do not collect banks, but we are connected 
to the national uh, e-finance gateway for payments and collections. We are connected equally to port authorities who are who provide basic data for the arrival of the vessel and the departure, and as well the container terminals and the warehouses inside those terminals provide the cargo movement for preparation for scheduling and stuff like that. We do integrate electronically with those guys. And finally, here on this drawing, I show that we are electronically connected to the decision-making centers inside the government. Of course, every ministry has its own specialty. It takes its slice of the information from the national enterprise for foreign trade, Egyptian foreign trade data, so that they can come out with the measures they would want. Now, this platform is central, as I said, it covers all the posts that's being operated by the different government authorities. Now, you would wonder, you are a trader, importer, broker, shipping line, or an exporter, how would you interact with this kind of clumsy drawing? You have two means, one of them on the left here, I'm hovering of it, which is what we call, or the name of it, the Logistics Service Center. And this center at the moment, helps people who do not interact over the portal. Then you can come visit any center close to you. You can submit your original documents, one file of the documents, don't make any copies. And then the, the front desk at that center will take care of digitizing your file, meaning performing data entry on, on it, scanning the images and documents, composing an e-file for your declaration that gets submitted to the customs officer that takes it from there. And then of course, route it, routes it to the different OGAs or the other, other governmental authorities that are required based on the type of shipment you are importing or exporting. The other means of your interaction with this NAFESA platform is via the portal, the e-portal on the NAFESA website that provides you with interactive uh, services that would allow you to input, lodge your data, upload your documents, follow up on their status, and then you can do any, everything else on it without having to go to the logistic service center. Now in the implementation of the NAFESA platform, which started in 29, March 2019, we had to take it gradual. So we had to, the, uh, to establish the logistic service centers to help people out so that not to stop any transactions from being processed. And then now we are talking, of course, about the portal. And very soon, as of July onwards, everybody will be working, will be advised to work uh, through the portal. And at the end of the day, we will discontinue receiving any documents or data throughout the logistics service centers, unless it is an exceptional case, like, for example, personal effects or something of the sort. Now, in order to do that, and with the multiple and the complexity and the number of uh, stakeholders, the governmental stakeholders uh, associated with the cargo clearance, actually in our country, with the different ports and situations, procedures will, are not the same. Some steps in some, in some ports are more than others. And in order for us to provide a central centralized system that can handle all the transactions in a uniform manner, in a fair manner to the trader and to everybody else, we had to do really do uh, the proper, the necessary engineering to streamline this, this process. Uh, 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 as opposed to the initial one, uh, you would notice that he, whether the left or the right, this is a single threaded approach. So all the procedures are, or steps are done one after the other. You can notice here that the trader or the broker himself is a common factor in all the steps. So he has to carry the file and go from one, from one agency to the other, from one office to the other to get his clearance document. Whereas here, after the re -engineer process re-engineering that we have done, we have done two things. Number one, we rely on parallel processing where, wherever possible. And number two, you would see that the occurrence of that gentleman, the trader or his broker, occurs only four times here the four times that I mentioned earlier. So you log, you come to provide the information or lodge it, you witness your inspection here, you pay, you make the payment at the banks, by the banks, and you collect your, your, your clearance document. Our geographical scope, as I said, is covering Egypt, all the posts in which goods are imported or exported. And we are relying now that the trade community will interact with us 
remotely via the portal. So then to you, Mr. Trader, you would look Egypt, would look at Egypt as if it was one port, regardless of where your goods will be uh, offloaded from the vessel, where you are, and where you are following your on your transaction from. Now that is the system. So it takes it takes care of the procedures. It takes care of the procedures from the moment the goods arrive, from the moment you submit your documents until you obtain your cargo clearance document. Now that is an error. When we talk about the advanced cargo information or the ACI, I change my tone and I talk about something different. This ACI is an integral component that integrates with the NAFESA system I talked about earlier. It takes care of uh, providing early on processing on your documents and data prior to your goods arrival to Egyptian ports, all right? And as I said, it is an integral part of NAFESA. What do I mean by this word? I mean that the outcome of the ACI, as it works early on, the outcome of the ACI is an input to the NAFESA system that I talked about briefly and quickly. In other words, the, you don't have to, of course, to provide the information and the data and the documents. Why? Because through the ACI, as you will see, you will have to provide such information and documents and data early on. So number one. Number two, the procedures that used to take place only upon cargo arrival and uh, a vessel arrival and, and your submission of documents, now some of, the, some of these procedures and steps can start early on. Why? Because we have the raw material to let it go. Let me show you here, this schematic diagram uh, depicts the, the message in very simple manner. The foreign parties to us, the exporter and the transporter, integrate or interact with the importer here in Egypt via using the blockchain as a technology and, 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 and information and document transfer provider to the NAFESA. NAFESA is the single point of entry. That's the single window for, for foreign trade. So whatever NAFESA receives, it directs automatically to the trader who have to take and play his role in the normal manner, except that it is paperless and except that it is electronic in this regard. Okay, let's look into this in a little bit of detail. What is the, the, the main purpose or the objectives of this system that we are talking about. Egypt would like, number one, to assess any potential risk that may arise from the uh, shipment the ship that will be bound to Egypt. In this regard, uh, it has to know who are the parties, who are the parties involved in the transaction, what are the goods that are subject to the importation, in our case, in an accurate manner. We don't want to say, for example, I'm sending spare parts. No. You need to tell me that I'm sending uh, this screw, this nut, this bolt, this whatever in, uh, in an itemized manner so that the country would be able to have a better picture of what is about to come to us. Number two, number three, we the, the government aims at expediting the cargo clearance. How would you do that? How would the ACI help in this? It would certainly help if we are able to obtain the data and the documents about your shipment early on before the goods arrive, then all the early documentary review, assessment, and uh, preparations for handling upon cargo arrival can be take, can take place prior to vessel arrival. This can be done. So you're, you're, you are using the time before, since the shipping left the port of exportation until it arrives here in Egypt in a positive manner because several steps done by customs, by GOIC, by NFSA, by the OGAs, that the documentary part will be taken care of fully. And you can even pay your duties and taxes based on what you declared before the goods arrive physically. So that if you are so confident about what you have, uh, have declared, it's a typical thing that you, you bring in every week or every month or uh, frequently, then by the time the vessel comes in, you have everything on hand. So the, the, your cargo will be offloaded thanks to the risk management system that is being uh, actually installed as part of NAFESA. You may be subject to clearance without inspection. So imagine this, this is the best part of it. If you were such case, you provided everything beforehand that was assessed, no problem with it. The cargo arrived, nobody would need to look into your cargo. Then this means that you will obtain the final signature on the clearance document upon arrival. 
Why? So then you would be close to, again, as if you are talking about just um, the delivery just on time, just in time delivery of your cargo. We don't waste, do we don't want to, you waste your time, leave your goods at the port, uh, pay and carry, pay storage, security and demerits and stuff like that unnecessarily. So we use that first part to ease that part off. If your shipment is would be inspected, then all that is left will be that it will be inspected and everything goes okay. The, the same signature will be stamped on your document because you have paid and you may, paid all your dues earlier and then off you go. If something goes wrong, it goes the worst and that's the worst case. Something is not matching to what you declared earlier in your documents. Then of course, there will be additional steps where data will be amended to reflect the actual shipment that, that come. And in this regard, in the ACI, we are aiming into achieving a paperless environment. This picture in front of you encapsulates what I'm talking about in general. It starts here from the top left part by the Egyptian importer saying, providing basic information about the shipment. The system would automatically assess this, uh, this shipment with the, with the particulars for potential risk, okay? And, and, and customs has, uh, 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 stipulated 48 hours for itself to look into it if needed to provide a yes or no. It, you, of course, you can get a yes earlier than that, than the 48 hours. If not, nobody talk to you 48 hours and one second, you will, you, you are granted a green light. So by default, you are okay unless otherwise notified. And there will be a reason. Say this type of commodity, suppose, is not uh, allowed any longer to Egypt or, for example, Dealing with this uh, trade partner is not uh, is not allowed. This is blacklisted company for a reason or another. If you are not aware of such thing, okay. So once the, the the importer makes the declaration, and of course the the majority, of course, of them will be passing with a green light to go. This process ends with the issuance of a unique identifier of the shipment that is about to come. We call it the asset or the ACID, ID, the Advanced Cargo Information Identification Number. And this number must be stipulated on the uh, on the shipment documents in order to differentiate and distinguish which documents which documents pertain to, to which uh, to which uh, shipments, so that when they receive them electronically, they come into the appropriate file folder. All right. Once the ACID is issued here, uh, an electronic message will go fly to the designated exporter, which was defined by the importer here, we, <clears throat> we tell them, Mr. Exporter, the Egyptian importer number one, two, three, with the name this and that, uh, stated that there's a shipment you are going to export to him from this country, from this port, and please make sure that you stipulate this ACID reference number on your documents before you send them to, to the NAFESA. So the foreign exporter will do his job and prepare everything, prepare the, the, the commodity subject to exportation, and uh, and, and then uh, call for the booking, the normal business as usual, uh, call for the booking, goods are stuffed. In that, at that point, the transporter himself, the shipping line that is going to ship your goods into Egypt needs to be on a safe side before bringing in something to Egypt and then Egypt would not recognize that shipment. In this regard, we provide the interface for electronic interface with, with the third party systems for the shipping lines or, or by, uh, by allowing them to get a service on the portal to examine shipments before onboarding it to the vessel. So it is a simple question, whether it's a one by one or an entire list. Say, I have this ACID, this is a shipment reference number from this importer to that exporter. Do you recognize it? Do you recognize it, Egypt? Yes, 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 yes. So the cargo is onboarded on the ship safely from the transporter standpoint. He wouldn't have any problems with it. And if something is wrong, for example, it was, okay, he will get the clearance to it. Then at that point in time, when the vessel departs, all the documents are prepared. They are, as uh, my friend Vieran talked, they will be sent to Nafeza, to the importer via the blockchain. So it is automatically received and, and funneled to the importer. Importer looks into it and says everything's okay. Once he agrees, the step, the, the, the process starts to operate, as I said, by customs and other parties. 
all kind of visas before shipment arrives. Shipment arrives in inspection plan and revision, and out you go with your with your uh, with your cargo. All right. Now, uh, th th this diagram, I don't want to get into further details. The process here you, that you are using this era before the vessel arrives to your benefit by proceeding with the, with, the, with the procedures so that the governmental authorities can take care of it, assess it, see what it wants to do with it so that your cargo can come safely, comes quickly, and then off you go with a clear with a clear uh, with a clear with a clearance document as as early as you can with the minimum number with the exp with minimum expenses you need to 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 to, uh, to carry thank you i'll leave the the, the the mic for the questions so that uh uh to Jan again so that we can proceed with the questions if there's anything else thank you engineer Kurt, thank you thank you so much that much to the theory um ladies and gentlemen um we are aware of the fact that a new system raises a lot of a lot of questions. Um, we work on that topic already from a gender point of view uh, for the past seven eight weeks, and some of your questions already raised in the chat are answered, and the answers are displayed on our website. Um, other questions we may take into that and, and then in addition yeah more questions yeah or some of the questions will be answered by the catalog i have yeah and this catalog i have is subject to questions already received before this webinar so allow me yeah to get yeah mr cott and yeah mr rotinski and yeah, uh, Mr. Walid Adel, yeah, from Nafisa, in in order, yeah, to answer now in the first round questions I have. The second round is my colleagues, yeah, passing uh, pass to me, yeah, uh, some of your questions which are not already on our website, yeah, uh, via WhatsApp. I will read them out in the second round to get the answers. And if there is still yeah, unclear, if there are still unclear topics, and I'm sure there will be, yeah, we are going to post an email. Yeah, uh, please refer to us yeah, on this email, and we pass your questions uh, to Nafesa or to, uh, to Cargo X yeah, to receive an answer. So to not leave anything unanswered. Let me jump into it. Yeah, the first round of questions yeah, go to Vieran. Yeah, uh, cargo X payment questions. From an exporter side, would you please mention how much should be paid for what exactly? We've heard about $3, $15, and uh, $50. Thank you, Jan. Uh, okay, this is an easy one. So uh, filing fee is USD 50 per ACI envelope. Transfer of the documents over the blockchain on platform of CargoX is USD3 per document, no matter the size of the document. So we might have one page or 100 pages. It, it is the same price. <clears throat> and uh, $15 is one-time payment for company verification. So once you end, uh, user is, uh, is uh, verifying its company, which uh, will enable them to send ACI uh, envelopes to Nafesa, uh, they will have to go through verification process. So first part of the process is financial transaction between us and the, the, the company uh, who, is, who, is, uh, who wants to be verified. So we will get the bank transfer, the payment for the, for the credits. And this verification process uh, consists of two steps. Second step is done by third party service provider within the platform. And this is only one time payment. So if, for example, from some, some case our our uh, service provider for uh, kyb or verification cannot find uh, or match all the details a company has entered on cargo x and we need to do the uh, we need to repeat that process you will be not charged twice for 15 dollars so you might change maybe address is is, is different in in uh, in court registry than the one which was submitted so maybe someone by mistake uh, was putting branch office details so we will charge you only once for that for that fee. In that sense, 
Next question is forwarding of receipt documents from another party in Cargo X free of charge. Yes, it is, unless documents are sent to the recipient on pay to collect basis. So uh, there are also uh, regular envelopes, not ACI envelopes available on the platform. For example, uh, I am company A and I want to send to my business partner uh, annual contract in digital original format over the Carvex, and I can send them uh, on collect basis and they will pay for the transaction before they receive this, this particular envelope with that particular document. But if I pay in advance from my account, from my, uh, from my uh, saldo of, uh, with the, my credits, then uh, the receiver of that envelope can send this document, for example, to, to his uh, legal, legal representative uh, for the checking free of charge. He will, they will pay nothing. It is also a general rule. So once someone along the way is paying for that document transfer, nobody else will pay for the second time for the same document. So either sender, either receiver of the document will pay for the transaction over the blockchain. Now, speaking about credit, how long can this credit be used? Does it have an expiry date? Uh, regular credits, uh, there is no expiry date. So the one you will purchase, but on top of every purchase, you will get some promotional credits. And these credits will be spent first, but because they have also uh, validity and they will expire after three months. But regular credits, uh, they will stay on, on your saldo for forever until they're spent. The last question in this round, yeah, and thereafter I give you a little bit room to breathe, yeah, uh, is who pays for cargo X fees, the importer or the exporter? Uh, when we are talking about ACI, and this is our topic today, uh, filing uh, and transactions costs are paid by the exporter. So Nafesa, for sure, as a receiver of the envelope, will not pay for the, for the service. So it is paid by the, by the exporter or the seller of the goods who is selling goods to Egypt. Now, thank you for, for that part. Allow me to yeah, uh, go to, but we'll, we'll get back to you. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, allow me to go to Nafisa. Um, why does the exporter need to hand in the documents via Cargo X and not via email? Now, uh, it's very simple and clear, Rian here and my dear friends. Now we are dealing with international trade business. We are moving away from using documents. We are not saying that you are going to send things by mail and provide me with the original documents. Now we are moving towards a paperless environment. In this regard, we need, of course, and you would agree with me, to secure, to secure your documents, your data, and your privacy at to the best level. This is international trade. There's a lot of competition here and there. So we needed to rely on a reliable technology. I mean, black blockchain, which is used for, as you know, for so, so much intricate and, and complex uh, financial transactions and cryptocurrency and the sort of things. And, uh, and to, to, to make sure that about the authenticity of the sender, we make sure that the data is well kept, that the data arrives to the receiver, Nobody can tamper with it at all times. So then the Egyptian government as a recipient, the importer as a recipient, and everybody can rely safely and proceed safely with the documents that you have sent. This cannot be done by pure emails. That could, that could make a difference. So on this note, it is yeah. mandatory to use the blockchain Cargo X to communicate with Nafisa. Yes. Correct. Correct. Yeah, since that question came up a couple of times via email and in earlier jets. Yeah, uh, so yeah, to the exporters, yeah, Cargo X is the mandatory tool to be used. Next question. It was mentioned that the exporter can send, uh, yeah, can send the documents to the importer via email and the importer uploads the documents on Nafesa. Is that correct? Now, uh, that is correct. Uh, that is a provisional thing at the current moment, because the the, uh, the the implementation of the ACI is not compulsory and obligatory to everybody now as we speak. 
we still have a grace period in order to get the importers and the exporters acquainted with what's going to happen, particularly the importers, rather than going, as I said, to the logistics service centers, they need to hop on onto the portal to submit their data and their documents. We allow them, we said, Mr. Importer, you don't have to come to us to the logistics center. Please register yourself on NAFESA, log on to the NAFESA, put on your data, receive your documents from your counterpart, foreign exporter, and he, until he can send things over the blockchain, please take it over, uh, upload it to NAFESA, co-sign it with a digital signature. So then customs and other, uh, other governmental authorities can operate on your data and documents without asking you for any paper docs for that. This is um, only transitional, but that after yeah. the 1st of July, that won't be the case. Yeah. Um, very, very important, I believe, is to stress that this is only provisional and it's not recommended to follow this way of handling it since yes. from the 1st July, it's mandatory yeah, to use Cargo X. So better to get acquainted to the system yeah, uh, in order to have a smooth transition phase, right? Right. Okay. Um, if everything is digital and no more paper anymore, are faxes, facsimil, yeah, signature or fax uh, signatures, can signatures allowed on the invoices? Yes. Uh, eventually, that will be the case, uh, Jan. Uh, except that now there is no integration with the with the exporter systems and stuff whereby an ERP system from the exporter side can really push the invoice or whatever document electronically and goes like off like this. I think in the initial stage, the facsimile, facsimile signatures might be needed to give just the confidence about the document itself, but eventually that won't be needed any longer. That will not be the case. That, that won't be needed at all. There, because what actually happens? there, there yeah. won't be there won't be a document for us for you to sign. It will be coming electronic, so there won't be that. That won't be needed anyway. Right. What happens in case of triangular transactions? Which company registers on Cargo X yes. and uploads the documents? Okay, uh, we discussed this at length actually with our counterparts in Cargo X. Initially, it will be the exporter, the seller, who is issuing the invoice to whom the money will be transferred. This is the party that will actually uh, submit all the documents over Cargo X. However, down in the, down in, in the future, in the, in, the, in the near future, we will allow, and the, Vera, if you need something to, to complement what I'm saying, please do. We will allow for, for example, the seller is in country, the manufacturer is in company, and the shipper is in a third country. All of them can send the designated documents from their sites to the one ACID. So the seller will send, of course, the invoice, the, the packing list, whereas the manufacturer can send the certificate of origin and the shipper can send the bill of lading because it's, it will be coming from the port where he resides. That will be in the future. But to begin with, it will be through the, initially when we start beginning of July, it will be the seller who is issuing the invoice and collecting the money. Just The maybe, next one. Uh, Sorry, sorry. Maybe just uh, so the seller who is selling the, the goods to Egypt, to Egyptian importer. That's important. Sure. Okay. That is true. Correct. Yeah, thank you. Um, the next question is a question I believe we received a hundred times from German exporters. Are yeah. there any changes in the legalization procedure of documents? Yes, the, uh, of course, we are, as I said, working towards a paperless environment. Customs does not require any legalization or attestation on the documents. So is most of the cases. At the moment, as we speak, at this very moment, we are in, uh, in negotiation with the Ministry of Foreign Trade and the Central Bank of Egypt uh, so that they can really allow for the acceptance of ele electronic documents without any attestation at all. Banks are closer. They are the, the idea is is well accepted, is well accepted, and so is the case for the Ministry of Trade. However, the the uh, the direct decrees have not come out yet. But for you and for us, as of July first, you don't have to attest any document uh, that is provided via Cargo X and, and going through the ACI system. So, so in in other words, in other words, yeah. 
whereas the bill of lading supporting documents still have yes. to be issued by a chamber of commerce in Germany, the legalization process through the Egyptian embassy in Germany is Not waived. Needed. Yes. Right. But it does not suggest that there is the acceptance of automatically issued bill of ladings. Uh, what, uh, what do you mean? Sorry, we did not. We did uh, not. We did not have that. Uh, uh, the, the question there is uh, in Germany. Yeah, there is for yes. for various years. Yeah, we issue. Yeah, or the the chambers. Uh, uh, these these bill of ladings are issued electronically. There is no signature on those bill of ladings no more. Think, uh, no, this no, is no, not no. being touched. Yeah, the the legalization is touched. Yes, this is no more required. We understand. Yeah, yes, but but the the uh, the BL has still to be issued. Let's say physically, not electronically. From the no, I think it can come electronically. I'll put that as a question to give you the right answer to it. But to begin with, it can. Why not? It should be accepted. It should there is be. No reason. We are accepting everything. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It we should are be. Accepting but... everything else. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Allow yeah. me from the from the view of the chamber. It should be accepted in the future. However, dear German exporters, so far, kindly, yeah just skip the legalization procedures with the embassy yeah all the other topics for the time being now stay the same we're working on it yeah just to be clear on that allow me to ask the next question the final invoice is always issued by the exporter after the shipment which does not give time for the upload this means that if the importer enters the data of the proforma invoice on Nafisa and the exporter uploads the proforma invoice on Cargo X, there will always be last minute changes, especially, and as an example, in the weight cross. Is there a way to amend data after shipment and with the issuance of the final invoice without penalties? Uh, the answer uh, is, uh, is is half and half. To, to be my, to make myself clear, at the moment, amendments, as you have said earlier, are allowed all the way up to the minute the transporter is making a final check on the cargo he's gonna put load on board of the ship. After that, as per the the, the ministerial decree, no amendments. We are we have talked with customs about the possibility of amending quantities and weights. And actually, I noticed here that the question is talking about the gross weights and stuff. Uh, I think we are getting close to getting uh, an amendment to that decree to allow for the amendment of quantities and, and weights, because this is, as you said, as, as mentioned in the question, it is so practical and it, it happens so often. And it is not an issue here. The issue is that they would not uh, allow touching the other basic information about the shipment, where it's coming from, who is shipping, who is sending that, that remains intact and the same. And uh, I would expect uh, I would expect to, to get something uh, from customs, official something from customs, cons confirming what I said concerning the quantities and the and the weights without any penalties, of course. Now, an exporter's question, yeah, uh, addressed to Vieran. Yeah, yes. if exporter company is working with a customs agent for all export customs formalities from Germany or the EU means the exporter creates an own cargo X account and must upload the documents by himself, or is there any possibility to delegate these formalities to the German customs agent, which is an external entity? Thank you, Jan. Yes, uh, German exporter needs to register uh, his company on CargoX platform, for sure. But also exporter can add a, a user outside of its company, like, for example, forwarder, and uh, who will be acting on behalf of the exporter under the exporter's account. However, in the following months, uh, we will be developing an option for the exporter to authorize a freight forwarder or their agent uh, to act on, on their behalf on the platform. 
So not that specific person, uh, that specific user from the freight forwarder agency, but you can authorize, for example, DB Schenker to, to do on your behalf on the platform uh, ACI. So they will be acting uh, under your account in front of, of Nafesa. So this is something what uh, will be developed and, and delivered within next uh, couple of months. I think before the summer, definitely. Yeah, partly answering the, the, the additional, uh, the next question, can an exporter invite in apostrophes its own partner customs agent to enter the Cargo X account or a separate Cargo X account yeah, will yeah. be needed? Yes, yeah, so basically that's uh, answered in previous questions. So at the, yeah. this very moment, an uh, exporter can, can add a user who is uh, outside of its organization under his own account to act uh, on, on his behalf. So this is current environment, but later on, uh, exporter can invite, for example, his forwarder to join the platform. They can connect and then he can also, uh, he can also authorize, uh, the exporter can also authorize that freight forwarder to act on on his behalf in front of the in front of the customs. So this uh, in front on a FESA, this will look like exporter is actually providing those documents. So just a manual labor, let's say, is outsourced by the by the exporter from from freight forwarder. Thank you. Back to Nafisa, engineer Kot. Uh, before we we uh, I asked the next question in which was uh, submitted to us in writing. Of course, you mentioned the ACID number yeah, in your presentation. However, since we since we receive so many questions to it, yeah, would you mind yeah to yeah uh, uh, give an idea again briefly, yeah, uh, how this ACID number is issued, on which documents this ACID number needs to be. Yeah, uh, uh, displayed and yeah. How does the exporter get the ACID number? I mean, you outlined it, but just to emphasize on it, since we okay. we receive these questions on and on. Okay, the, uh, the 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 ACID number is automatically generated within forty eight hours from an Egyptian importer's submission of initial data, basic data about the shipment. Right, so. 48 hours, it should come out, if not, if not earlier than that. How does the exporter receive this information? He receives it from two ways. Number one, Nafisa would send an email to the foreign exporter. How would we know the email of the foreign exporter? Simple. Number one, the importer mentioned his exporter by his, the, with his uh, VAT ID number or commercial registry number with everything else. All the credentials of the exporter that, by the way, have been validated and verified by Cargo X are sent to us. So we have a reliable database about the exporters who are bound to send documents to us. So that email that is recorded on the exporter's record in our system, that email address will receive an official mail with the ACI ID number, with the importer ID number, and the exporter, of course, his ID number that need to be on the documents. Now, putting the data on the documents, by, by, uh, by the way, does not necessarily can be from being printed on the documents if you are using automated systems or even stamped, stamped on the document. It's just to really make sure that when we receive the documents, when officers receive, they make sure that the documents are really pertaining to the, to the transactions that they are really considering. Okay, it is a, re a reference information. All right. Now, when you send the information via Cargo X, of course, you mentioned the ACID number. So our system in Nafesa knows that all the electronic files coming from you via, via the blockchain pertain automatically to the database ACID number one, two, three. That's where I allocate it properly. Now, when the procedures get by, the officer would be looking into invoice. It has the stamp of it or something in print, whether printed or stamped on it says ACID number one, two, three. It's another verification on, on the document just to, to make sure that nothing is not out of order. Now, let's move to the specific ACID questions. Can yeah. the ACID number be used for two different consignments within the three months, meaning that the set of documents for consignment was uploaded on Cargo X and the shipment arrived, the same ACID number can be used for another consignment 
within the same three months, but different products? No. The answer is no. Absolutely, since the ACID number yeah, uh, re it reflects the consignment yeah, and yes. the shipment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, if one consignment has three BL and many different invoices, packing lists, and so on, and the shipment is carried out in different weeks, can we use the same ACID number? The answer is yes, but there are uh, considerations to be taken. Number one, Jan, uh, all these bills of lading, the three bills of lading in the example, if, more, if not more, have to be on the same vessel. So yes, they are not meaning three bills of lading coming on three different voyages from the different ports. No, they are coming on the same vessel. This is number one. And all the bills of lading and the, any number of packing lists and invoices all these have to be included in one declaration. One declaration. Right. You can put as many bills of lading you want, many invoices as you want, as you wish. It's only on one declaration. Now, if ACID, yeah. right. If ACID was per multiple BL, will this mean that form 46 will be opened for the multiple BL? Yes, of course, because now it is one declaration when the officer opens that declaration, it has 10 bills of lading. It happens to be the, the vessel with rough seas. So it had one bill of lading after the other and then until it came. So there's no problem whatsoever. Yeah. For now, the exporters bank is involved in sending the original documents to the importers bank, which costs fees in addition to the fees the exporter pays on Cargo X. It has been said that later on, and once the Egyptian banks approve online transactions, exporters will not need to bring the documents to their banks. Would you please elaborate on the mechanism yes. and how will the payment be insured prior to release of the documents? Okay. And number one, there is uh, an ongoing uh, discussions with the Central Bank of Egypt and the, and the main banks underneath it as, as operators in this, in this matter. And the objective is really to uh, move to, into a paperless environment by receiving electronic documents only. In this regard, the documents that we would receive, we assume the documents that we would receive from uh, via the blockchain from Cargo X, which would be used to, to process the transaction by the via customs and the other governmental agencies will be the, the subject documents that will be moved and pushed to the banks. Now, how would an exporter ensure that his paint is made before any, any clearance is made? This is controlled by the central bank itself by the fact that uh, no clearance is allowed unless the bank issues a form here that we call Form 4. Form 4 is a prerequisite before clearing any goods. So regardless of the fact that the documents come early and early processing took place, whatever, this is all immaterial. Uh, the Form 4 is the control point, the control document that needs to be provided and accepted, of course, by customs. Uh, when, if the banks are going to go paperless, Form 4 will be submitted electronically. Actually, we were in a meeting discussing this point actually yesterday. This Form 4 will be issued electronically from the issuing bank, from the Egyptian bank, to allow as a prerequisite before uh, the clearance is made. If other, all the pre other pre if all the other prerequisites are satisfied with the arrival of, of a Form 4, then only uh, cargo. And Form 4 does not get, by the way, issued unless the importer gets the consensus and the money is transferred and wired to the exporter. Form 4, it does not get issued by any bank unless these two steps happen. So the next question, uh, when will Cargrex act on behalf of the exporters bank? I will, I will take this one, Jan, okay? Sure, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, okay. So uh, any bank can join uh, Cargrex platform uh, in order to, to process digital original documents. So uh, Cargrex uh, will act on behalf of the exporters bank in case there is a e-letter of credit in place. If all stakeholders agrees to exchange digital originals over the Cargo X, there are other uh, electronic VL providers. If you are talking about uh, maritime shipments, Cargo X is not the only one. 
but we are the, the only one with the, with the public blockchain as underlying technology. So if you, have e, uh, if you want to apply for ELC, you can easily use our platform to transfer all uh, digital original documents through the banks. And we already have several banks we are working with uh, and which are registered on the platform. Nafisa. Yeah. Engineer, yeah, uh, God. What happens with LCL shipments if all export documents are not complete? Yes, uh, export documents can be submitted as and when they are complete. There is no burden whatsoever on the exporter, all right, to send uh, premature data or documents at all. If he does that, he would enjoy the importer will, will, will get the benefit of using time in a more constructive manner, but all the way it can come whenever as and when ready, no obligation. And in this sense for LCL shipment, how can we add the ACID number? Yeah, for LCL shipments, okay, you have, you may have three shipments in one box, okay, each pertaining to a different importer. Each importer has the claimed his shipment, so he has an ACID number. So when it comes in the manifest, in the manifest itself, the cargo manifest on board of the vessel will, will, will include three line items, three shipment lines, although they are sharing the same box, all right? So bill of leading number one for Mr. X, ACID number one, two, three. Uh, shipment number two for trader Y, uh, two, 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 and so forth. So in this regard, you will have any N number of bills of lading, each bill of lading has its own ACID number. Please advise if Nafisa platform or Cargo X platform will be linked to shipping line systems or freight forwarders, or should the shipping lines and freight forwarders register to the systems? Okay. At the moment, I'll, take, I'll speak from my part. If you would like to add something from his side, that would be by all means. Uh, we provide at the moment Nafisa provides an application program interface with third-party systems. I mean, the system for the shipping lines and the freight forwarders. But for, for what reason? For one main reason, for them to uh, very validate and verify that the cargo they are putting on board of the vessels are really recognized by the Egyptian government. We, there is no point of interaction with the shipping lines, the foreign, uh, the, for the foreign lines abroad or the freight forwarders outside of Egypt until this event. We want them to be safe and confident that what they are shipping is accepted without any problem. Other than that, there's no point of integration. We, and for this matter, we are providing an API. Viran, you want to add our view of Cargo X? Yes, I mean, we have many shipping lines already using our platform, many forwarders also on the platform. So, they have uh, their accounts and they're processing bills of lading, other documents on the platform with their customers. So, yeah, it's it's already here. Not all of them, but yes, some of them are here and are using the platform. So let's continue uh, with uh, Nafisa again. Uh, paying VAT customs duties via CPSE finance will be also connected to. Yeah, uh, Nafisa payment or one yeah. has to make two separate payments, one way uh, for VAT, one customs payment and one to Nafisa payment. It's one payment only that, that takes it all. It was mentioned that ACI system yeah, will classify products and use the prices recorded on the system as an index. However, there are products of which the price is defined through global stock markets like metals, through LME and plastics, we're seen through ICIS and plats. Such prices may vary dramatically. Yes, uh, actually, what we are uh, what we are referring to here in in uh, in the service or the the tool that we are providing to the to the officers does not really relate to the uh, to the uh, stock market type of like uh, metals and stuff like that. It's about talking about the traditional type of commodities, all right? Whereby, since I have a centralized repository for all the transactions, I can provide all the uh, filters and analytics that they would like to conduct on such data. However, 
in reality, concerning the other the metals and the, 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 and the other examples mentioned here, the customs officers have access to the internet. They go by themselves to check on the prices of such commodities uh, whenever they arrive for importation. What is GS-118 classification? In fact, I looked into this question. I, I, I didn't understand what, what, what's, what, what's GS-118, GS something it's called the SSCC. If, if that is meant, it is something different. What we are talking about is that the commercial invoices should be itemized by the products that are subject to ex exportation, all right? So, and in this regard, rather than giving me a simple description, you put next to it the part number. And if it's a final product, GS1 is recommended because it is adopted. A, a lot of Egyptian companies for taxation purposes are using GS1 for reference to the commodities that they, they do trade with in Egypt. So we are recommending GS1 if that is the case. If not, the exporter would be uh, advised to put in the part number from his system that will be that will be export of the parts that will be uh, uh, traded with Egypt. And by the way, that part number will be the one and the same part number that will flow through the Egyptian authorities all the way to the tax authority. So the importer will use that number to submit his taxation invoices and stuff like that. But uh, I don't, I, I didn't understand if, if, if something. Uh, Right. Uh, we may we may follow that up. Yeah. Uh, I, I wanted to before I ask that particular question. I wanted to say it's uh, now getting very class, uh, very technical. Yeah. However, yeah. Let us follow that up. Yeah. Move on to the next group of questions. Um, now, data protection law. Yeah. Uh, according to the European, yeah, let's say data protection law, is the data protected? Where are these data stored? Who has access to it? Can we please have a statement? Sure, that's one for me. Thank you, Jan. So yep. uh, Cargoex uh, has a very strict uh, GDPR aligned policy and uh, this is available also on cargoex.io under private privacy policy and all personal data is stored in the EU. We, don't, uh, we do not share any identifiable or business sensitive data on the blockchain. Uh, so uh, personal or document content wise, and we do not share any personal information uh, with an outside company without explicit user permission. All documents are always encrypted before they are stored. Uh, transfer of document must be explicitly digital signed by the user's blockchain key, uh, which Cargo U uh, X, uh, by the way, never sees. So this is something what you keep for yourself. So that's your fingerprint, your identity on blockchain. So every uh, every user has his own fingerprint. Therefore, users are always in control of their own data and documents. Nobody can initiate transaction but themselves. So not even Carwex. We don't have any backdoor to anybody's account. Uh, maybe just to explain here, you can, you can consider Carwex uh, platform as a front end uh, for the user to interact with the blockchain. Okay? So we don't see what you do on blockchain what you do is your own business and this what you send is always encrypted stored on ipfs and then it's sent uh, uh, over the blockchain only hash of the document is sent uh, to the recipient okay so content itself is always encrypted and and stored on on ipfs thank you indeed yeah um the the last the last two topics were recommendations of the uh, questions dash recommendations we received prior to this webinar. Yeah, uh, and maybe, yeah, uh, Engineer Gamal, maybe, uh, yes. uh, uh, Engineer Kot, sorry, uh, maybe you, right. you wish to uh, comment on that. So, yeah. accept the upload of an Excel sheet to Nafisa with a variety of products. The difficulty of listing all the items included in the shipment manually is high because sometimes exceeds thousand items. That is correct. Yes, uh, actually, actually, uh, we provide we provide uh, the capability. We provide the capability to uh, to uh, to receive 
uh, Excel sheets for invoices. However, we have specified the format of the Excel. We are testing that, by the way, and it will be uh, announced very shortly, shortly. And in addition to that, we are now putting the final test to receiving an XML electronic invoice using GS1 invoice. So it's an X standard XML invoice as opposed to, uh, to Excel. You have two methods. You will have to, those two methods available to you. They will be announced and published once we get past uh, the, the final testing over the next few days. Right, great. And the second one, yeah, uh, subject to, to invoices, uh, possibilities to use cover sheet to link ACID to invoices instead of printing it to the invoice. Yeah, I mean, I didn't remember when you talked about this a few minutes ago, I didn't mean uh, it has to be printed on the document, you can stamp it. Uh, I think uh, I, I'd rather, if you ask me, I'd, I'd rather that stamp it on the document rather than attaching an additional cover sheet on it because that cover sheet, can, I can attach it to any document. It could be, in a sense, mis, misattached or misplaced with, with the inverse. But it, nothing, nothing should be wrong with that. Nothing should now, be wrong. Now, this was, these were the questions which we received prior yeah, to our uh, uh, session today. Uh, we still have more than 270, uh, I just uh, got to understand, uh, participant in that session. So I, I would uh, assume that this uh, Q&A is rather useful. If you allow me to ask some more questions, yeah, not to take up too much of your time, but some more questions, which I received now from my colleagues out of the chat. Yeah, uh, and I received it via, via WhatsApp. So uh, how can I get GS num, uh, GS1 number and is it a must to insert it? And if so, where? This was directed to Nafesa, this yeah. question. Sorry, I got disconnected. I couldn't hear. Can you, can oh, you sorry. Repeat? Let me, yeah, allow me to repeat it. How can I get GS1 oh. number? Oh, okay. And is it a must to insert it? And if so, where? Um, there, there are two things. Number one, if you are interested as a party to register your products, you're doing international trade, all right? And you would like to register your product so that they could be easily traded between countries that you, your, your product that's known, then you need to apply through the GS1 website for in, in your country to provide you this service. There is a process, they take it, they, they, they do an entire process to, to, to have all your products uh, well-defined, uniquely defined, and, and, and described properly. Now, where do you put it? What's the other question? Where do you put it on the invoice? If you are talking, if you are talking about an electronic invoice, if it is in the XML format, and if it is in the Excel for a file format, you will find it when it gets announced, you will find the location, the, the, the field whereby it is next, for example, to the quantity and the name and the stuff and the description. It will be, it will be well-defined in the Excel structure. And if we are talking about that being an uh, XML standard uh, electronic invoice, you will certainly have a field, a tag that says the, the part number or the GS1 number. If you are talking about the document that will be printed, you would, you would need to put it uh, alongside, alongside the line item itself. So you have, let's say an invoice that has three items. Item number one, you say what the description it is, part number, Quantity, unit price, whatever price. It's just, uh, yeah, you put it wherever along, uh, as long as it's along the same line of the of the of, of the product you are talking about. That's you know, nothing special about yeah. it. Yeah, and I just see uh, to the G one number. Yeah, uh, I see question. If I have G na uh, G one numbers locally for my exported products, shall I give the list to exporter to add it to documents? The export. The exporter has GS1 numbers of the products that will be exported. He already has that. Yeah. So some of our clients can't find Egypt when they trade ACI envelope. Uh, Yeran, can you take this? Cannot find Egypt. They cannot Is find there? Egypt when they create ACI envelope. No, I, I think, uh, yes, they don't see ACI envelope 
Egypt ACI envelope. They don't see it on the platform, right? That means that, yeah. uh, that the customer, uh, so we had soft launch last week, uh, Tuesday for ACI envelope. Anybody who wants to submit the ACI, uh, ACI envelope to Cargax can apply for it uh, uh, over the platform. And uh, we will, we will uh, enable that feature if you have an ACID number. But uh, first, uh, any com uh, every company who wants to do that needs to go through verification process. So there might be two reasons. Maybe you didn't apply for, for that uh, with, with uh, our support team, or maybe, maybe uh, you haven't uh, completed your, your verification process on the platform. So those are two reasons why ACI Egypt envelope is not visible for them. Thank you for that. Uh, is a change in BL possible? Is changing? BL, bill of lading, I guess, BL. And I, I don't, yes, yes. What, what, what do you mean changing? Uh, amending the data in the, in the BL itself? Or what, what, what does it mean? Or replacing the BL. Oh, no, no, amending. Yeah, yeah it, it stands for amending. Yes, amending the, uh, as per customs law, uh, actually, uh, amendments are, uh, are accepted by customs law all the way until no later than 48 hours before the vessel arrived at the port. So, for example, it took two weeks all the way until it arrived to Port X in Egypt. 48 hours prior to that, you are, uh, the, 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 you are allowed to amend the, the data uh, as you wish on the bill of lading. Yeah. You may, you may answer uh, one question which came up uh, uh, a couple of times before and even during yeah, this webinar. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is uh, the date of 1st of July, yeah, whether there yes. is an intention to extend the trial period. Well, uh, there, there are requests from the trade community to extend the trial period a little bit, but what I have at this moment at this moment is that the 1st of July it's obligatory to everybody and 1st of July meaning 1st of July shipments any shipment that will be onboarded to, to fly to, to, to come to Egypt has to uh, comply with the ACI system that is what's what we have at the moment as if you see my questions since the question I have is 1st of July is the deadline for shipments landing in Egypt or going out of the international country? Going out of the, from the international country. Uh, question to Cargo X. Uh, can I upload all documents in one PDF to save costs? You can try. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, let me ask, let me, let me intervene here, uh, Viren. No, that will not be uh, possible. Why? Because NAFISA system needs to receive the documents, identify the documents and put them in the right place. So I need to know that I received the invoice, I received the packing list, I received the bill of lading, I received the certificate of origin, whatever that document is. They have to be uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. identified. Um, can you, I, need to, you need, yeah. to, you need to, 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 uh, you know, to match the document type with that particular file. So it could be PDF, XML, Excel, Word, whatever, but you know, this needs to be that document packing list is this document so you know you need to match these two so but uh, 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 next to that question if you have more pages for of packing list of course uh, you will be charged only three dollars so if you have 100 pages it's still three dollars absolutely and uh, uh, just allow me yeah uh, to comment of course yeah uh, true for all the exporters not only german exporters of course everyone yeah, in this uh, uh, difficult uh, environment, yeah, is very cost conscious. Yeah, however, yeah, there are additional costs. On the other hand, yeah, uh, you you will save the cost for yeah the verification through the Egyptian embassy, for example. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, but it's uh, it's it's great to uh, let's say to clarify these things yeah before initiation. Um, how can I get Nafisa, yeah, engineer code? How can I get the ACID number as an exporter? I believe that man, yeah, that was mentioned already now a couple of times. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, yes. So then we go to the next one. Uh, can we create different folders in Cargo X? No. This uh, is say it again. 
Yeah, and this one is for me, Gamal. So uh, yes. okay. folders are preset. What can you do within Cargo X? You can you can without any integration, you you can customize your experience on the platform, and you can give, for example, to team leaders or managers to create different rules and filters on the platform. So, for example, you have five users and uh, within your organization, and you, you can you can give different permissions to different users. So, and you can you can give different uh, you can you can arrange some some rules. Uh, for example, when you receive the envelope and uh, the incoming message will appear on email of uh, not of all five users, not to overload them with unnecessary message message with unnecessary emails. So the, the one of them or two of them will be uh, attending this incoming emails. So you know the, the, we can we can you can create various rules and filters on the platform. Then uh, one question, uh, uploaded documents on Cargo X. Should we send the consignee uh, to the consignee company or to the import broker or to Nafesa? No, Nafesa, of course. Ah. This is preset in Nafesa. the system. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Which Egyptian entities are connected to the Nafesa system? That's uh, basically a clarification. You mentioned that in your, yeah, uh, in your presentation. Yes. Yeah, which Egyptian entities are connected to the Nafisa system? As you know, of course, in my first slide, we are connected to customs, go with general organization, export import control, national food safety authority. We are integrated with the port authorities. We are integrated with the Egyptian payment and the payment and collection system. We are actually integrated with the National Telecommunications Regulation Authority. We are connected with the Ministry of Interior Administrations that get, that intervene with the uh, particular products that are subject to their interventions and approval. We are connected to the Chemical uh, Labs Authority. We are now talking about uh, uh, we are talking about the, some of the remember the starlets that I had around my first slide. My first slide there the the red the red yellow and green circles. We have plenty of them that are already connected to us. So in this regard, what does it mean connection mean to you as a trader here in Egypt? Is that rather than your broker who had in the past had to make a copy of the file and the documents and go with his car to the location where that office of that department is to get them to approve his request. These requests are automatically funneled and routed. All the data and the copies of the documents are all available to them at their sites. And they, they, at the other end, they put in their recommendations, they put in the fees they would like to collect, and they, if they would have any additional instructions, they put it so that you get you receive an SMS message if they say, please provide us with a catalog, you will receive that. If they do that, we will send an immediate SMS and a post on Microsoft Kaizala, and where the money is, it will be paid with one payment, one one-time payment with a consolidated invoice, and that is how, how that's how we are reducing all the burdens of the shoulder of the broker. Now, one technical question to the Nafisa system. There is a request of company identification number and its type in Nafisa system under data of foreign exporter data. What is that number? Is it exporter? Is that the exporter registration number? Can I take this one? Yes. Go sure. On. Yeah. Please. So this is very, very uh, uh, frequently asked question. So uh, you need to identify uh, the exporter. So when importer is applying for ACID number, he needs to enter either VAT number, either incorporation number, or in, in, in USA, for example, is tax number. So uh, also there is option to enter. Uh, I think Cargo X, uh, Cargo X uh, uh, company number. So uh, according to that number. Uh, then API will call our database, and it, the, the data about that company will be pulled out and will be presented on the on the screen of the of the importer who is applying for ACID number. Am I right, Kamal? Yes, actually, actually, from our side in Nafesa, uh, we deal with that part in the very first step. The Egyptian importer, of course, is automatically identified because he has an account on Nafesa and he has a token, so we know him. He doesn't tell me from which company he is. He's the importer. He, the importer, this, this person has to identify the trade partner from which he's going to import the goods. In that regard, he types in the identification number of that partner, whether that be in his country. That could be the VAT ID number or commercial registry number, all right? 
This is the number that we know that partner with. By the way, this uh, business key or this identification number along which the name will come automatically, I do, we do in Nafesa, we do receive these details about the foreign parties from Cargo X. So that company initially registered on Cargo X, it has been verified. This data comes to us in the database. So whenever I say in Deutschland and in Germany, one, two, three, four, five, system knows exactly that this is company XYZ, which, whose address is in Frankfurt or whatever, and this is the email and stuff like that. It's automatically lined up with with the with the Cargo X database, so that there is no there is no gaps, there is no uh, data integrity is uh, achieved at all times. Now, there is a question, yeah, uh, and yeah, I'm grateful for that question since I heard that earlier, and it's a clarification, yeah, to what you already uh, said, yeah, uh, Engineer Cod. Um, there are the ACI shipping lines, or there is the ACI shipping lines guide on the NAFESA portal. And in chapter four, it is stated yes. that ACID number is issued for one purchase order, brackets, and multiple shipments are allowed, as it cannot be guaranteed that all goods are on one vessel yeah, due to capacity or other constraints. This would contradict the given information regarding one ACID number for goods on the same vessel. You may clarify on that, please. Uh, customs does not allow uh, multiple uh, bills of lading on a, on a declaration unless this is a customs uh, regulation, unless those bills of lading are on one and the same vessel. It is not a system constraint. It is a, a regulation by customs that's imposed by customs. So the ACID number yeah, yes. is subject to one vessel. Yes, but correct. 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 It's yes. One declaration. The more accurate. Uh, the, yes. Yes. In, in a sense, it's one. It's one vessel. Yeah. So if you and have then more another than one, follow up. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Uh, that's all right. Please go. Uh, okay. There is another follow-up question. As clearance and payment will be done based on the uploaded documents on Cargo X, is there any need to send original documents to the Egyptian customers at all? No. The answer is no. What happens with LCs in case the advising bank in Europe does not accept to do e-docs for LCs? Okay. That is subject to the current discussion uh, with the central bank and the and the participating banks. This is the the, the table discussions are ongoing, and uh, there may be we are expecting. We don't know yet how things will materialize. Uh, everything is possible. Nothing is clear to me yet. Because I heard somebody, yeah. I heard some, some from some banks that they say they do not uh, accept anything but, uh, but physical documents to do that. I, I mean, I, I do they, have, yeah, I do have more questions. Allow me yeah, to say, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Allow me to say, I'm very, very grateful yeah, that you're yeah, both yeah, of you, yeah, that you're uh, answering all those questions. And before I ask, yeah, uh, you allow me to ask you a couple of more questions, since I know uh, it's it's quite an effort, yeah. And yeah, <laughs> is are you okay with uh, some more, not that many more, like five, six more okay. questions? Just shoot. okay. Uh, yeah, I I can I can see it would be all right if we do it like in within the twelve next minutes or till one o'clock or so, because. Yeah, yes, by all means. Other than okay. that, we can always send us this question. Okay, please go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Uh, can we see which banks are already work uh, are already working with Cargo X? Yes, uh, this is uh, also a question related to GDPR. Without consent of the user, we will never reveal their uh, uh, if they are using the platform or not. So, right. We have the terms of delivery, CIF Alexandria, 
can our forwarder organize this whole procedure over Cargo X? Cost insurance rate, Alexandria. I think we've already explained that. So uh, I think th uh, this, this uh, if, you, if you go to Incoterms, even if it's Xbox, CIF, DAP, whatever Incoterms, exporter needs to, to, to provide all relevant details for the importer of the buyer of the goods to complete the custom clearance process. That so, is true. Uh, ACI is integral part of that process. So no matter the, the, the so we, we got that question also, if, if I have FCA or EX, EXW, so, you know, that's, that's uh, it doesn't really matter what term of, term of delivery is. Exporter needs to provide sufficient documents and enable importer to, 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 to comply with local regu regulation and complete import custom clearance process. If I sell a used machine from Italy, for example, as a German trader to Egypt. So the machine comes from Italy as a German trader, uh, trader to Egypt. How does that work? I believe uh, Mr. Gamal already explained that one. So German yep. trader has obligation to, to comply with ACI regulation because his invoice will be presented to the customs for the clearance purposes. Until when, oh, oh, no, 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 sorry, 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 where is here? Until when the documents have to be uploaded on Cargo X, for example, two days before arrival or immediately after BL has been issued? I mean, yeah. Uh, we, we have, uh, we have, uh, we had that rule uh, 48 hours before the sailing, but uh, you don't need to provide uh, no, original uh, BL. You can you can provide draft of BL, so you can do that one week before the I, sale. Yeah. Can I can can I intervene, uh, Viran? Sorry, yes, yes. I remember. Yes, the ministerial decree triple two for year 21, uh, 2021 uh, stated that it's uh, actually forty hours prior to vessel departure. Actually, all right. Now, uh, now, number one, you can send the documents at any time. You know that the documents get. Uh, uh, get uh, actually issued or finalized right after the vessel departs, right? You can submit the documents at any time when they are complete, okay? And 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 by the way, the 48 hours, it's not, uh, uh, there was, uh, let's say what, there was an, uh, is there incorrect uh, con concept, uh, understanding of this part? It is not prior, it's not, it's not after. See what I mean? It's the opposite. It's not like before the ship leaves, you have to send that because the bill of lading won't be issued at that point in time. See what I'm saying? Of course, yes. But yes, you right. Can, you can do you can do that up front. You don't have to wait sure. for the vessel to the exactly. ruler because only draft of BL is required. Yeah. Absolutely, so absolutely. I yeah. encourage everybody to that to do that as soon as possible, not to wait until the last moment. That's much better and safer, to be honest with you. What are the needed documents from the importer side to generate the ACID number? No documents are needed. All he needs to do, he has to have, of course, either the pro forma invoice on hand or the contract that he has with his, uh, his exporter in order to be able to define the commodities or the, the products that he's about to import. But as far oh, as documents, next, yeah. he has mm -hmm. to have them, he has to have the information available to him, whether that being uh, official or unofficial, as long as this is what he's discussing with his counterpart. Now again, uh, frequently asked questions, and I can tell you I only have four more, and I won't accept any more for now. Yeah, uh, okay. but, uh, yeah uh, uh, but a frequently asked question yeah, is only three, uh, a sea freight from 1st of July obligatory or also all other transport routes? No seaports only at the moment because airports would have to need uh, other provisions because of the short, the fact that the flights are sh much shorter. So then other considerations have to be uh, taken care of. Only seaports. July 1st, it's talking about seaports only. 
Do we have to mention the advertising materials, display materials for the imported products and some advertising materials like gift with purchase, shoppers, wrapping paper? Do the Egyptian company, does the Egyptian company and the foreign company yeah, still have to register and pay all the requested fees? Specific, yeah, I would suggest yeah, we direct that question to you in writing. Yeah, because I did not really get a grasp of the yes. Yeah. Do we have to lot. mention the advertising materials? Yeah, uh -huh. display materials, yeah, for imported products and some advertising yes. materials, yeah, like gifts, let, let yeah, me, uh, and, okay. and all that. Let me put it in a different manner. I'm, I'm going to ask the, the Egyptian importer or his broker, what do you do today? Whatever you claim on your declaration has to be mentioned, has to be mentioned. If what you're talking advertising material are subject to be sold or exported, meaning exportation, there is value and stuff like that. Samples, oh, sorry, uh, there is I just got the clarification ah, okay. yeah, by a phone, okay. samples. Okay. Uh, 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 there is a special provision. I'm not. I cannot remember how the details are now. But there are. There you. The trader, the Egyptian importer, will claim it and will say this is a sample. The, he has the 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 facility to mark anything that he has mentioned as sample, so that they get processed in a different manner. It could be the entire. It could be by the way. It could be the entire shipment is coming as a sample or something for an exhibition or something like that. So there are provisions to claim samples and anything of the sort. Usually the bank asks for originally legalized invoice of IDC. Is this be still existing? Will this still exist after 1st of July? Until we receive the final, the, until we, until the discussions with the central bank and the banks get finalized, uh, things probably be, be, will be the same for, for, for the bank. And the final one, yeah, is linked, yeah, to a, a, a thank you, yeah. Um, thanks, sir, for, yeah, uh, information, yeah. Uh, can you please repeat the custom cargo X platform, yeah, uh, Vieram, yeah, would you mind, sure. yeah, to repeat the costs? That was the very first question. So to close right. with that one, <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, I will start with registration fee. One time you pay fifteen dollars for uh, a verification fee. Sorry, not registration verification fee on the platform. So, for example, if this verification doesn't go well, you need to uh, to to do to through the process for the second or third time. We will charge that only once. So this is first part. Second part, fifty dollars ACI envelope for filing and three dollars per document no matter the size of the document if there is a one page hundred pages it's always three dollars per document three dollars per packing list three dollars per draft bill of lading three dollars per invoice and three dollars per certificate of origin which is equal to 62 dollars per filing if you have only those four types of documents required but you can learn more about charges also on CargoX once you create your account. Everything is uh, publicly available over there and uh, it's publicly listed. Um, Mr. Ortinsky, Vieran, Engineer Gamal, Engineer Kot. Um, thank you so, so much. See, the success of this session is displayed by still having four, uh, 240 yeah, uh, guests uh, around, yeah, uh, and we were about 270, yeah, so the information you shared, yeah, is very, very important, very useful for the exporter and the importer, of course, and allow me to address our guests. Um, we will display the answers to these questions. We will try to get hold of the answers which we did not answer now during this uh, session and we are going to display that yeah, on our website. Um, we will of course uh, 
yeah, uh, display this webinar as such, yeah, uh, post it on our website as well as on, uh, yeah, on uh, YouTube. And we really, really look forward yeah, to a successful start of uh, Nafisa since in the end, the all of us are going to benefit since we, if we cut down customs procedures to five days, this is going to be state of the art. Thank you very much yeah, for your attendance. Yeah, Engineer Kot, Mr. Otinsky, thank you so, so much yeah, for your explanations and for your time dedicated to this session. Yeah, this is highly appreciated. And I'm certainly talking uh, in the name of all our guests, the exporters and the importers, and wish you a wonderful day. Be successful and mostly stay healthy. Thank you very much for joining. See you soon. Bye bye. Thank you, Jan. Bye -bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you so thank much you. for yeah, no, thank you so much. Looking stay forward safe. to see you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.